When we talk about postdoctoral fellowships uh, with regard to the MSCA, there are two types, European postdoctoral fellowships and the global postdoctoral fellowships. You will actually hear more of that uh, from our first speaker, uh, Mohamed Kafi. Our second speaker today is Noko Iwata, and you're going to hear about her testimony a little bit later. So thank you for tuning in today. So good afternoon, Konnichiwa Minasan. So I am Mohamed Kefi, a researcher from Water Research Technology Center, Tunisia. I got my PhD from the University of Tsukuba. I, but my speech, I will give it not in Japanese, but in English. Okay, so good, good morning and good afternoon for Japanese people. So today, I will share my screen. Uh, today, I will talk about MSCA postdoctoral fellowships, opportunity to foster excellence in research. Uh, thank you for RxS Japan for this invitation and also for uh, organizing this kind of event. It's very interesting for Europe, but many Japanese uh, do their research in, in Europe, in Europe or in associate countries as Tunisia. So for the outline of the presentation, uh, first of all, I will talk about the objectives of uh, a Marie Curie Actions Program. Then I will give a brief overview of MSA. I will introduce the MSAFAF postdoctoral fellowships, and finally, I will pro uh, provide some recommendations about how to uh, apply uh, some advice, how to, to apply the successful applications, because you know it's quite difficult because in MSA action, uh, MSA postdoctoral fellowship, it's like a JSPS in Japan, so it's a very prestigious. Uh, program and many applicants and all, uh, all of the world apply and it's a very competitive program. So MSA under Horizon Europe. They are uh, in the program of Horizon Europe, they have three uh, pillars. Pillar one is excellent science. Pillar two is global challenges and European industrial competi competitiveness. And pillar three is innovative Europe. For the Marie Curie uh, actions, it uh, belong to Pillar 1. And uh, the main objectives of this program is mainly to fund excellent research and innovation and equip researchers at all stages of their career with the new knowledge and skills through mobility across border and exposure to different sectors and disciplines. So to, to summarize, uh, the main key feature of MSA is researcher trained skill and career uh, development at all stage of career is to uh, focus on excellent research in all domains. It's a bottom up approach. It means uh, you should propose a research pro a proposal based on your experience. It's international cross sectorial interdisciplinary mobility. The main objective of uh, MSA is the mobility of the researcher. It's an attractive working and employment conditions. Uh, later, I will talk about the budget. And also, it's very important for hosted uh, uh, organization. It provides structure and impact on organization through excellent programs. And also now, we are not focusing on research, but also on collaboration with industry and SME. So it provides a strong collaboration with industry and SME. The budget uh, during the Horizon Europe, during the, all the program between 2021 to 27 is about 6.6 .6 billion euro. So there are five actions. Uh, the first action is doctoral network. It's mainly provide uh, budget for uh, PhD students. The second one is uh, postdoctoral fellowships. So I will uh, develop this uh, action later. Uh, later. And the third one is staff exchange, it's many supporting research and innovation for collaboration between different organization. Co-fund program is mainly to, to, uh, to co-fund uh, program already done like in doctoral program or postdoc. And the last one is MSA and citizens is mainly for outreach and uh, public event. So maybe some of you know about the previous program, it was uh, Horizon 2020. So the name of uh, the program a little bit changed. Uh, for Horizon 2020 uh, doctoral network, it's called before Innovative Training Networks. Uh, postdoc fellowship, it 
it's called individual fellowships. Staff Exchange, it's research and innovation staff exchange, right? And uh, co-fund, it's similar. And uh, uh, MSA and Citizens, it's before it was European Research Night. Uh, I would like to give some overview about statistic of under Horizon 2020. So about uh, more than 65,000 uh, researchers uh, applied or received the fund from this program. 37% uh, are research from outside Europe. The budget provides is about 6.2 billion euro. More than 1,000 doctoral program was implemented and uh, more than 4,500 uh, 4, companies supported and also gender equality, equity. So we hope about 32% of female research uh, get benefit from this program. Let's talk about Japan. So during the horizon in 2020, uh, about 102 project was signed and the uh, succession rate is about 19%. Uh, incoming research from outside Japan to Japan, the number is about 780. And outgoing from Japan to Europe or associated country is about 224 researchers. Uh, the main program pro uh, which received fund it's mainly rice and also individual fellowship. Just to see, to to give an overview about uh, the mobility of researcher uh, for research from Japan to outside Japan, many of them went to Germany. And uh, for a researcher coming to Japan, many of them come from Italy and Germany and France. Okay, now let's move to the main target of this presentation and this uh, webinar is to focus about postdoctoral fellowships. So uh, the main objective of this uh, MSA postdoc fellowship is to support postdoctoral research and career. And uh, the main objectives is to foster excellence through implementation of research projects enhance the creative and innovative potential of research holding of PhD based on training, transfer skills, and career development, focus on I3, international, intersectorial, interdisciplinary mobility, and also very important, bridge and explore to the non-academic sector and also career development of research. So I said before earlier, so this, this project is mainly a bottom-up approach, so it includes all the scientific fields, even a area. So there are two types of uh, postdoc fellowships, European fellowships and global fellowships. What's the difference? So for European fellowships, is addressed to all nationalities from Europe, member state or asset country, but also third country. And the target is to move to one hosted country, a hosted uh, organization from Europe or uh, associated country. And the duration is about 12 to 24 months. But for the global fellowship is uh, mainly uh, addressed to nationals or long-term residents of Europe, uh, member state or associated countries. To, we have two phases. First one is called the ongoing phase to one third country, but we have mandatory, we should return phase uh, to one to Europe. So the uh, total duration is about 24 to 36 months. And also we have a possibility to do non-academic placement uh, after the end of project uh, and duration about more maximum six months. And also during the uh, fellowship it's possible to do second main phase and the duration is about one third of the fellowship duration. And it can be, and, and the second phase can be done anywhere in the world. For the criteria, so as I said, it's a very competitive uh, uh, program. So, and also LGBT criteria is quite, uh, uh, how to say, very comprehensive. So for the uh, participating organization, it, it uh, should be, uh, it's a monobeneficial action, and applicants must be submitted by a single independent legal entity established in Europe, member state, or Horizon Europe associate country. And also associate, as I said, in global fellowship, 
they are possibility to have an associate partner for uh, hosting outgoing phase. For researcher, uh, it's the, the program is mainly addressed for postdoc for, uh, researcher. So you must have a doctorate degree before the call deadline. But also it's possible if you if you know yet formally award of the doctorate degree, uh, sex, successful defense before the call deadline must be unconditional. You may apply even if you not award by doctorate degree, but you already done your defense and validate your defense. Uh, for the uh, research experience, maximum of eight, eight years full-time experience in research. So, for example, if you uh, you are in uh, 23, uh, 2023, so if you got your PhD in uh, 2010, not possible for you to apply. But if you got your PhD in 2010, but you didn't work, you didn't do research, it's possible to apply. At least you, you have this maximum of eight years of full-time experience. So it's measured from date of award of the doctorate degree and years of experience outside the research and career break will not count. And also very, very important is the mobility rule. So it means that must, uh, the candidate must not have resident or carried, carried out, our, out their main activity, work, studies in the country of the beneficiary uh, for the Europe, uh, or European fellowship or the host organization for the outgoing phase for the global fellowship for more than 12 months in the uh, last three years. It, mean, it means, for example, if you, uh, you, you made your uh, PhD in Japan, in, for example, in Italy, and uh, you finish your PhD, for example, in 2020, uh, 2021, so it's less than three years. So in this case, not, uh, not possible for you to apply to Italy. So you sh should apply to France, to Spain, to another country. For the budget, we have two, uh, two type, uh, two, two contribution, one for, for the recruited researcher and another one for institutional unit contribution for the host organization. So uh, the budget is mainly live, uh, living allowance, mobility allowance, family allowance, but also for the uh, organization, it's uh, the uh, program provides research training and network contribution, management and aggregate contribution. Uh, this one, it's a gross budget. Uh, for the evaluation scientific panels, so as I said, it's a bottom up appro uh, approach project. So, and the, and the panels of the project should be within this panel. So it's, uh, we have eight, eight panels, chemistry, social science and humanities, economic science, information, scientific science and engineering, environmental and geoscience, life science, mathematics and physics. For the create evaluation of the uh, proposal, uh, we have three criteria, excellence, impact and implementation. So excellence is about representing 50% of the score, impact 30% and implementation 20%. Very important to know that proposal scoring equal to or above 70% will be considered for funding, but it depends on the availability of the budget. So, but, uh, but based on experience of last, uh, prof last uh, results, maybe the cutoff scores it's no more or less between 90% or uh, 85%, so 70% is quite limit. But for uh, submission again, if you receive in your uh, uh, in your application in 22, 2022 uh, score below 70%, is not possible to submit the same application. So you have to do another application with another topic with maybe another host can't host uh, organization. For the criteria, so as I said, excellence is about 50% for the score impact 30% and implementation about 20, 20%. And uh, the evaluator of the proposal will focus on the, special, on the quality and pertinence of the project research and innovation objectives, soundness of the proposal methodology, quality of the supervision, training, and the two-way transfer knowledge, 
and the quality and, uh, of the researcher's professional experience, skills, and competence. It means, so the, the evaluator will focus, or reviewer of the proposal, will focus how this project can be benefited from for the researcher and also how the quality is it originality of the work and quality of the research proposal and also how it is uh, how the, uh, the experience of researcher and the supervisor and how the researcher can provide uh, benefit to uh, the or host organization and how the research can also receive some benefit from this uh, uh, this uh, proposal and training for the impact it's uh, first target is enhance the career perspective and employability it means after the msa program is finished what's the impact of what you want to do so it's want to go to the industry to continue research so we have to develop this part and also this will uh, uh, the end you have to focus also on the expected outcome and impact of the project and also the expect of scientific and societal and economic impact. It's very important. And the last part is uh, about implementation, uh, mainly about how the process can be implemented and uh, how it's how the host uh, institution and participant organization can a capacity to implement this kind of project. And also we have to give equal attention to all sections of the proposal. It means because you mentioned, but we mentioned that 50% of the score is going to excellence. So many of the people will focus on this part and will avoid impact implementation. So you have to work equally in all the parts because every information is very important for the, uh, for the score. For about the uh, last statistics of MSCAPF 20, 2022, so the successful rate is about 17.5%. Uh, uh, the number of applicants is about more than 7,000. Uh, and uh, they select, uh, it was selected last year about 1,235 uh, postdoc researcher. Uh, and the rate is about 17.5%. For the Euro European postdoc fellowship, the number of researchers uh, selected is about 1,093, but for the global postdoc fellowship is about 142 researchers, and uh, the female applicant is about 43%. For the project panel uh, selected based on scientific panels, about 24.5% uh, project from social science and immunity was accepted, was accepted. And the second, and information science and engineering, uh, it's about 13.9% project accepted. And uh, for chemistry is equal, similar as well, is 13.88% uh, from uh, chemistry panel was accepted. So how to submit the proposal? So you need to go to the web platform funding and tender opportunity. And uh, so all the proposals that must be submitted electronic via, uh, electronically via the funder and tender portal electronic submission. Only one proposal per individual research can be submitted. In case of uh, several proposals involving the same individual research, only the last submitted one will be considered eligible. And the deadline for uh, this score is 13 September to, uh, 23. So for the proposal, we'll have two parts. The part A is application form, and the part B is mainly technical description of the proposal. The part A, part A is filled directly online. It's mainly administrative information about the applicant organization and also uh, coordinator, beneficiaries, and budget. But the part B, it's, it's uh, technical descriptions. And you need, you need to download uh, the file, and then you re-upload it as PDF in the system. So we have two parts. 
part B1 and P B2. So B1 is mainly to describe is description of the proposal based on excellence, impact, and implementation. So very important. So it should not be longer than 10 pages. And also you need to follow the format instruction instructions. So it so it requires that the minimum fund size is 11 points. But some people maybe reduce the size to increase the information, but it's not allowed by the system. And B2, no overall page limit applied, and it contains CV of the reserve, information about participation, participating organization, and letter of, letter of commitment, especially for, for the global fellowships. So some recommendations. So you need to read the official guidelines and documentation. Especially, you need to check the eligibility criteria, evaluation process, and scientific requirement. You need to find a suitable host institution and supervisor based on the uh, reputable host, uh, reputable or experience in the field. You need to start preparing your application in advance mainly with the collaboration of the supervisor and host institution. So no, you don't need to work alone, so you have to work together with the supervisor. And uh, you need to develop a strong research proposal. As I say, it's very competitive uh, program, so many applicants and also the criteria for the judgment, it's quite hard. So that's why you have to develop a strong research proposal and also emphasize the potential impact and feasibility of the research. Especially also you need to focus on uh, applied, not especially research, but also for uh, applied to industry. So you, you need to mix between research and applied research. And also you need to proofread your proposal before application, especially for English, for uh, missing data. So it's very important to recheck your proposal before submission. So don't miss the deadline. Very important. Don't ignore the evaluation criteria. So, for example, as I said, uh, if the excellence is 90%, 50% of score, and impact is 30, and implementation is 20, you need to, to focus all of them together, not focus especially on excellence. And don't provide incomplete and incorrect information. And don't overcomplicate project proposal. So, keep the proposal clear and accessible to evaluator from because they are coming from various backgrounds and also focus on keywords, it'd be important for you. And don't wait, very important as well, don't wait for the last moment to submit your proposal. So for example, if the deadline is September 13, so you need to work from now about the proposal. So because you have many things to do, research, uh, review, so, and also sometime when the deadline is, Close many applicants will apply together in the platform. So you need to, to start to wait. Don't wait for the last month to submit your proposal. So just uh, last information about the next call. So the deadline is, as I said, 13 September. So the platform needs uh, the program is already uh, launched. So you you can apply from now. And uh, the selected uh, project will be notified from February 24, uh, it's if it's okay, they will can uh, sign the grant agreement for uh, in June, and also they can receive as well the June in June the the grant. For, for for this year, uh, the budget is about 260 million euro. For the EF project European fellowship, the budget is about uh, 221 euro million euro, and for global fellowship is about. 39 million euro. So there are many information in the web and the internet about the applications and how to the guide for applicant. So please check all the uh, document to apply and to check uh, to check the conditions, the eligibility. So you can go to the Horizon Europe website. Uh, you can find also a guide for applicant for postdoctoral fellowship. And also very important this year, uh, you can focus uh, uh, on Green Char Charter. We have also different website and platform like MSANA. And also you can contact MSA uh, National Contact Point for more information. For all the world, you have uh, European countries and 
you can you contact the national content point for more information on our access like your japan you can get information about calls and uh, project and uh, msa matching platform in this uh, platform you can find some information about uh, proposal supervisor project so it's we have many information online so and also we have many webinars on youtube so you can find all the information what you want thank you for your attention and arigatou gozaimasu absolutely wonderful great timing super useful pieces of information i'm sure that our audience uh, has learned quite a bit about how to submit a successful application so now we are going to listen to uh, naoko iwata and uh, let me just uh, say a few words about uh, uh, Naoko. She actually Thanks. presented on our webinar uh, a few years ago. Again, that was a very similar webinar, MSCA. So you can actually check that recording out in our YouTube channel. And uh, today's presentation is what SCIF, uh, PF, uh, gave me. She currently works as a research engineer at a Kalios Assay in Brussels and um, used to be affiliated with, with the uh, DAXA. At the same time, uh, she won a very prestigious MSc grant in the past few years. Uh, she spent her time in Italy and she's going to talk about that experience. So now, please, if you could share your slides. And in the meantime, yes, thank I'm wondering- you. Thank you. So you can see the my uh, presentation. Yes, right? perfect, okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So uh, let me uh, introduce myself first, but I think uh, that you did already uh, introduce me. Thank you, Edith. So I was uh, I, I worked uh, from 2007 to 2022 uh, as, uh, in a JAXA as Japanese Aerospace Agency as a summer engineer. And uh, during working, I obtained the PhD in two phase four field. And from 2020 to 2022, uh, I stayed um, in the University of Parma in Italy as a uh, MSCA fellow. And then from this May, uh, I started working in a small company for a heat pipe to face flow device uh, in, uh, uh, in Belgium. So this is an outline of uh, my, uh, my presentation. I, I, uh, I show what I gave, uh, what the, the MSGA gave me uh, from three points. Uh, during the writing proposal, my fellowship period, and uh, the impact on my career. So uh, I got a very strong proposal writing skill uh, through my experience writing the proposal of MSGA. So there are two important points. Uh, first, uh, your proposal should be uh, should have a logic, clarity, and specificity. So it it means you, you should explain clearly without uh, with clearly everything without a leap of leap in logic, and you should provide a specific and quantitative information. And second, uh, you should you have you should show um, your ambitious goal with a feasible and realistic plan. Uh, you you should convince reviewers with uh, with, uh, you should convince reviewers that you can uh, you can achieve this your ambitious goal by showing the realistic plan and risk and mitigation plan and the, the capacity of your host organization. Uh, you definitely need the support from other people. This is a uh, uh, this uh, image the picture shows uh, all the support I was given during my uh, writing uh, when while I was writing my proposal and uh, I don't think I was awarded without uh, this support so start now uh, drafting your proposal and finish your draft as soon as possible and have it reviewed and revised and um, I think it is very important to uh, uh, for you to be reviewed your proposal by the, the, the people who is very uh, who is expert of MSC, like a uh, uh, national contact point or your uh, host organization or also 
maybe you can ask the support from your access Japan coordinator. So uh, next, I will talk about my experience uh, during my fellowship period. And as you may already know, uh, this MSCA fellowship is uh, a joint uh, a collaborate, collaborative research. Uh, so you have to stay in the host organization in a different, uh, uh, they have a different, they should have a different research topic from yours. In my case, I was a researcher in two phase flow field. And in my first organization, my supervisor was a, he was an expert of a advanced infrared measurement and inverse heat conduction programs. So these are very useful a new approach to analyzing experimental data. So through my fellowship, I gained a skills for analyzing my experimental data in a new with a new approach, and this allowed me allowed me to. Uh, to see a more deeper understanding of my device. Also, the fellowship uh, gave me a new network, especially in Europe. Not only my supervisor and colleagues, but also the researchers in the in the Parma University, and uh, there were also other uh, MSc fellowship fellows. And my supervisor joined uh, several uh, European projects, so I I could see some people from this project. And I also attended the conferences, which were quite different. Uh, the conferences, which is different field from my uh, two-phase flow field. And uh, the, another point aspect is uh, my supervisor was, uh, for me, uh, he worked as a role model of a, a principal in investigator. So I learned uh, what a good PI should be. So um, in this in in these five points, so he had a proper and strategic plan for for, for publishing papers, and he uh, he started a new collaborations after he joined the um, conferences and I, he met and uh, sorry he met an, our new researchers. He had a flow of uh, research new research ideas, and he got funding enough funding to so that we can proceed our research. He was also very open-mindedness. I think it's very important to have an uh, international uh, team. Also, you can join, uh, you can enjoy, enjoy the, the dif different uh, culture, nature, cuisine. Uh, for me, Italy it was a very, was a great country. The, it, it was not a reason to stay in Italy, first moment, but uh, since uh, during my two years, I felt that Italy is really good. And uh, also the MSCA uh, encouraged you to, to learn the language in this, your host country. So I learned uh, Italian uh, a little bit. So uh, I took the, the career, the impact of career, uh, which the MSCA gave me. Uh, at the end of my fellowship period, I, start, uh, I started thinking about uh, having a, a seeking a job in Europe. I thought about uh, an academic post and also non-academic post. I applied, I talked about my personal experience. I applied for five European universities and I was invited to an interview by three. I was not offered by two, but I, I also, I declined one because I already decided to, to join a no academic field. But I think, um, so maybe my experience is not very succeeded, but I think that without uh, my experience of my uh, fellowship, I don't, uh, I don't think uh, I was or even invited to uh, your, uh, an interview by European universities. So I think this your uh, fellowship worked as a springboard for me to uh, next step, next uh, step for the academic post in the Europe. At the end, I decided to join uh, industry because uh, what they need is uh, synchronized my target. It means my my uh, my research is more close to industry, and uh, their target is uh, commercialization of my heat pipes, and also they need some research aspect which is understanding phenomena and modeling. This is also, this was also my goal of my research. Uh, 
in the last uh, I will show you uh, like I will, I, some support for for your your applicants. So I had a blog about uh, how to write a uh, how to write a uh, uh, MSG proposal based on my experience. I'm sorry, but uh, it is written in Japanese, but you can find it with uh, this link and if you Google with uh, this term MSG fellowship. And for uh, for non Japanese uh, applicants, I, I can share my proposal if you write if you write uh, send me a message to, to this email address. So thank you very much, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, uh, Nako. Every time I listen to your story, it uh, definitely gives uh, me an inspiration to keep going ahead with this uh, uh, work and also encourage others to follow in your path. Thank you very much for giving your testimony again and outlining how you actually succeeded uh, in a fundamental way, if I may say, uh, in your field. So let's just uh, field a few questions. The first question goes to uh, Naoko. How did you get connected with your host institute? And like, did you actually collaborate with them prior to your application to the MSCA grant? Well, so thank you for uh, your question to Shuichi. Uh, actually, I, um, I met him be two years before my application to, to the MSCA. We met in a conference uh, which was held in Italy. But before that, I, I never met him. And uh, he talked to me uh, because he was interested in my uh, my presentation, and uh, he suggested uh, to start a new collaboration. But uh, uh, during two years, we um, we did a bit, very little collaboration, and uh, but uh, some studies I I did uh, when I decided to to apply for the uh, this MSc fellowship. Uh, I was thought about uh, him because it, we joined in the, the same conference, but uh, it's, um, uh, we are more, more in a different field. So this worked for the application to the MSC Fellows. Uh, this is Thank my case, so but. Thank Maybe you so I much. can add something about this point. You know Absolutely. about eligibility, about uh, mobility reserve. So uh so not possible to apply to, to to if for example you make your phd for example in italy and you would like to apply again but you have to avoid three years so so that's why it's better to focus for uh, my recommendation is to focus with uh with host country with we didn't uh, make your research there so it's more because it's condition it's eligibility condition thank you so much there is a new question in the Q&A box, and I would like to again ask um, fellow attendees to please type up your uh, questions so you can actually listen to the answers live. Okay, so this question goes, do you have statistics on success uh, percentages of research uh, researchers applying to the global program versus European program for postdoctoral fellowships? So again, statistics on the success uh, success rate. I'm guessing of yes. researchers applying for these um, that global program and the European program for postdoctoral fellowships. Is the lower budget for the global program reflected by fewer applicants? Hmm. So actually, based on uh, 2022 last call the success rate is about 17 percent in all the programs so it means for uh, 7,000 applicants about 1,235 research was selected and uh, for the budget european fellowship is more important so for this year european fellowship is about 221 million euro, euro, yeah. Euro, a million euro, and for global fellowship is about 39 mil, uh, million euro. And uh, so that's why the applicant, I mean, there is a, the success for the applicant from uh, for the global postdoc fellowship is quite lower, is 
lower than the European postdoc fellowship. So for in last year, about uh, 142 researchers from global uh, postdoc fellowship were accepted. And versus to uh, European fellowship is more than 1,000 uh, researchers. So, so, the, so because you know many applicants from because you have selection for European fellowship is all nationalities on the world they can apply, but for global fellowship is limited to uh, European countries and associate countries and or long term residents. So that's why many people would like to apply for European uh, fellowships. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So let me just have another look at the, the chat. How much is the salary of uh, MSV program? I'm guessing uh, they're asking for the, the grant. Uh, the yes, grant. for the grant. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it? Actually, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, the budget, it's individual. Uh, I mean, the salary or the budget is for researcher, and one part is going to the host uh, institution. So the, the living allowance is about 5,000 euro uh, monthly. And also we have also mobility allowance, family allowance, and uh, different also specific allowance. But it's, it's actually 5,000 euro, it's a gross uh, living allowance, but also we have correction uh, coefficient. For example, if one research applied to Tunisia, they will not receive 5,000 euro. They will receive like correction, it depends on the country, living allowance of the country. So yeah, I think in Tunisia is about 65%. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the correct uh, coefficient, but if you apply to Europe, it be like 100%. Uh, percent. So it depends on the country, but the, the average is about 5,000 living allowance. Uh, 5,000 euro for living allowance and we have 600 mobility allowance. And even for, for the institute can receive uh, research training and networking contribution of about 1,000 euro and management and direct contribution for 650 euro. Thank you so much. Okay. Again, most people are interested um, in money to support their families, their own research. And indeed, this grant is actually very generous and yes. one of the most yes. coveted, one of the most coveted, not only in Europe, but also around the world. Yeah. So let's just have a look at the next query. For the MSCA European Fellowship, are we allowed to select any researchers from European universities, be it a professor or assistant professor, to act as our host? Or are there any restrictions? Hmm. Actually, uh, MSA action is mainly for mobility. So it means uh, research from Japan should go to Europe for, uh, for, uh, for European fellowship. In this case, but as I said, uh, uh, Naoko, so you have to contact host, uh, court, I mean, a supervisor or host institution. And then you work together about the proposal. So uh, it can be professor or assistant professor. It's OK, but it depends on his research experience. So you know, it's high competitive uh, program. So it's better to have high level of research supervisor. No, Kose, but her supervisor, maybe she's excellent in his field. So you have to focus on one high level excellent research, uh, I mean, supervisor because he, he will receive a score based on his experience. And also, for example, I am coming from Waterfield, so I can apply, I can apply for energy. So I will, I, will not give a, I will not receive a score from this kind of, uh, so you have to be, uh, to apply for based on your experience and on your skills. And also your supervisor should be high level and your host institution should be high, so high level in the, the skill, on the, on the field of application. Maybe I will add something about the research proposal. You know, uh, this program is bottom-up approach. So you mean no need to uh, to focus. For example, if you focus to, I mean, you need to focus on your experience, a research proposal, your experience. So, so it's up. It's like it's similar to GSPS in Japan. You you should propose your research proposal based on experience. We have eight panels, and uh, all their area is uh, or disciplines. It's possible to apply. 
And also, Horizon Europe focuses also on the bridge between academic and non-academic. So now, Co said, so you have also to uh, to talk to think to think about the imp impact and implementation and how this your research can be used for for the uh, industry and also for training for academia. So very, um, I mean, this one is very important to uh, for the research. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much. Uh, I do see another message in the chat. Do MSCA um, need English uh, certificates? So I'm guessing the application process itself. Does it require any sort of uh, English certificate, language exam, and so forth? No, I don't think so. So now, Co said maybe because the, but the proposal is in English, so that's why you have to proofread your application before submission. You have to check English style also to uh, to correct the error, spelling, grammar. So it's very important to have good English uh, for your proposal. No need certificate. I think you actually answered the question that was uh, posted prior to the last one. What are the most difficult points when drafting proposals? Yeah, you have to... I think to... it varies for everyone, to be honest. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you have to follow the guidelines. I mean, because the scores based on 50% excellence, uh, 30 impact and uh, 20 implementation. So you don't go, you have, have, you have uh, your description of proposal, you have 10 limit, limit page, about 10 pages. So that's why it's very difficult to, to provide many information and uh, in limited pages. So uh, my recommendation is to, provide key keywords as Naoki said so you you have keywords not go to the old all review it's not a paper it's not a manuscript for research it's a grant proposal so you have and also we have the uh, the reviewer or evaluator will have many applicants so that's why we know we will not take time to to review all of them so that's why you have to to respect the 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 guidelines and also make it, it easy and also don't make a lot of word and focus especially on your research proposal and your background and your uh, research so this one is difficult is to follow the guidelines i think <laughs> yeah and also it's high competition so many applicants so that's why you, had, uh, uh, you have to to be uh, very how many pages yeah great thank you so much the next question how many pages are average successful proposals can writing shorter proposals be beneficial? So is it an advantage if you uh, are- I don't think so, because they said he's 10 limit pages. So 10 limit actually is a shorter proposal actually. So 10 limited, you have to, to describe your excellence, impact and implementation, I think is not too long. And if you're for 10 limit, you lose only five, it be not, will not receive a good score, I think. So I think you have 10 limit, in 10 limit pages, you have to develop your proposal in detail with originality, with how to be applied, how to impact to, to industry, up, apply uh, for your uh, research experience, uh, for your long term career. So you have to show this point like development of career, skills, uh, applications. So, but 10 pages is not long, <laughs> long, I think so. But if you have 10, I mean, if you make uh, five, it'd be okay for the platform, but uh, not good for the for the evaluation, I think. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what's your experience now, Oko? No, Oko, Do yeah. you have to significantly cut down on your proposal or did you have to kind of beef it up so it would come to the expected length? Yes, uh, I completely agree with uh, Muhammad. I think that uh, to, to be a good proposal, it should be the 10, 10 pages limit. I So you left only one one line or just um, <laughs> here, the 10 pages the best. Uh, for me, uh, I talked uh, in a previous webinar, but uh, I made a mistake for the format. And uh, with uh, the, my mistake in format, we, uh, when I correct it, corrected it, it just only have eight pages. So I should write more two pages to hear all the 10 pages. So I promise to, to pay attention for the format as uh, the Muhammad said, you, you follow the guideline uh, exactly. 
and then start writing the proposal. Uh, yeah, yeah, based on format, so sometimes people, because now the format is 11, but some some people use 10 to increase the proposal, but it's not accepted by the system. So you have to follow the guidelines. Yeah. No, yeah, as I said, Nauco, so maybe the proposal should be work together with the uh, supervisor. So he has experience in the research proposal and grant. So because it's not a, it's not a paper, it's different than paper. So it's not too many scientific, it's mainly scientific move to the bridge to the academia. So the survivor, so that's why it's very important to uh, to start working with the supervisor and to set, find a suitable supervisor with high reputation and high skills and high excellency in the field. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Again, if I were you, I would definitely type up a question. It's an opportunity that doesn't come around every day. Here we go. Thank you for the questions. I think gender aspects are emphasized in MSCA. How did you address this issue in your proposal? Again, all of them are excellent questions. So thank you for typing them up. Uh, Mohamed, yeah, you might want to answer this and then Alko could actually comment. Yes, I think so, yeah. 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 yeah, gender aspect is very important. So uh, as, I said, for example, for last year, uh, how many just for it? Yeah, about 33% female applicants received budget was accepted. So uh, gender, I mean, gender is very important for the applicant. Also, gender is very important for the uh, impact of the project. And uh, now also Europe is focusing in Green Deal. So also Green Deal and sustainability is very important. So. You have to, uh, how to say, emphasize on, uh, emphasize, uh, focus on uh, gender, also green deal, sustainability, SDGs, very important. So uh, many keywords is very important for the application. So maybe now Ko can, because she she got, can add something. I think. Oh, okay. So uh, in in my research topic itself doesn't have a gender aspect. I mean, it's not there. Uh, my Target is not a human being, also mm. it might, it's a and doesn't have a gender. But so in my proposal, I stated that uh, I'm a female researcher in the engineering field. Still in the engineering field in Japan, it's it's more. But uh, I mean, in the Europe, even in the Europe, the percentage of the female, the ratio of the female uh, researcher is uh, much less than the male. Uh, it's uh, around. 20 or in Japan, it's less than 10%. So I, in the proposal, I, I, I said, I want to contribute to the bottom up or to prom promote the, uh, to joining in the feeling of female, young female researchers. And I want to uh, focus it promoting the female, uh, encouraging the female researchers to the STEM field. So, I addressed uh, this uh, the gender aspects in my proposal in that way. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, indeed, as as far as I know, some of the important aspects, as this was mentioned earlier, is also about dissemination. How you can actually disseminate the information about your research to the next generation of girls, for example, to encourage them to do similar research and to kind of raise awareness about your own field. Uh, we have several colleagues who spent uh, time presenting in elementary schools and secondary schools in Europe and talked about how they actually became researchers themselves. You know, this is the, um, again, emphasizing the, the gender aspect during the dissemination. Mm -hmm. There is another question. How important is the number of publications to the success of the application? Yeah. So actually, they don't mention uh, the number of publications, but they focus on research experience. So for example, uh, you are working, as I said, I am working on water. So I have publication on water, but I don't have publication on energy. So, uh, so it depends on my experience on the field of applicant. So if you have many, it's OK, because it means you have experience. So uh, it's even for the host supervisor as well. He should have a lot of papers, a lot of patent as well. It's very interesting for him. 
and a lot of experience in research and collaboration with uh, company and SME is very important. Number of people is not indicated, so maybe now Oko said. Uh, yeah. Yes, I mean, uh, I think if, if you have um, not so many uh, publications, as Mohammed said, it's not a problem, but you can, um, you can sub, uh, you, you should support, I mean, uh, with your proposal, you write more, um, uh, but it should be, it, it, it should be ambitious, but also at the same time, but it should be feasible or realistic. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you can say realistic plan, but, uh, you you will publish in two or three years. You will publish the paper in this journal with this result. You can show the the plans, and I think it it, it will support the, you uh, your your publications in the proposal. Yeah, in the section of impact, you have to mention how many paper you want to uh, to apply during the, within this period of fellowship. So. So you, I don't know, you can say 10 or 100, you have to be more realistic and <laughs> you have to do feasibility, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I see one last question coming up in the uh, chat. Do the, does the nationality of uh, the applicant affect the MSC result? I mean, some countries um, have limitations, countries uh, with sanctions and so on. So again, it's a very useful question. Thank you. Okay, so I will just about sanction. I don't know country section. I don't know, but about the two, you have two kind of, uh, as I said, two kind of fellowships. So European fellowship and uh, global fellowship. For well, European fellowship is open for all nationalities, no limits. Uh, but for the global fellowship, it's limited only for uh, European member state or associate country. So, uh, I mean, the national, the, the, the barrier is in this one. So for European fellowship, that's why many applicants for European fellowship because no, no, no limit, no nationality is uh, constrained. And okay. also we're not, I, mean, I think also not, I don't know, if you are coming for one country, about, we had not advantage. The advantage is your proposal, <laughs> excellence, impact and uh, implementation. So, yeah. Yes, and uh, at, at the same time, there are no points given to uh, nationals of countries that are under sanctions. So I think maybe the question might also refer to the fact that uh, in some countries, it's really difficult to conduct top-notch research due to the you know, scarcity of resources yeah. and the limitations and you know, the non-availability of, of um, high-speed Wi-Fi and so on and so on. So yeah, unfortunately, there are no points um, um, given at this point. Uh, yeah, at this juncture, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, any further questions? Let's have one more, even though we are a teeny tiny bit over time, but at, at the moment, I don't see any. Okay. Well, Maybe I will add something you about uh, seal, of seal of excellence. Okay, okay. You know, sure. if you receive a good score, for example, more than 80%, 85%, and you're, you will not, because due to high competition, you don't receive a fund. Some country provides fund for this proposal. It's called seal of excellence. But it's because it's very high competition and means 85% it's high, high quality of the work proposal. But unfortunately, due to a number of applicants, they don't receive, but some country propose some budget. I'd like to express my gratitude to our speakers today and also the audience for coming. I'd like to invite you to follow us on SNS, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Line. We also hope to um, launch further SNS pages later. And uh, I hope to see you again in our upcoming webinars, either online, on site, or in hybrid events. Thank you very much, and please send your thank queries. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And at your Thank you, and goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.